All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am standing in what is perhaps the most interesting room I've ever stood in before. This is a garage, but what's unique about this garage is that this slab sits over a wood framed floor. The garage is finally cleaned out. Will it actually support a vehicle without us falling in or the concrete cracking? That's one of two vehicles. So in this video, let's go over all of the framing, some of the engineering details. Of course, if it's a wood framed floor, there, there must be quite a bit of engineering or design involved in it. And we got called out. I wrote an article about this for Journal of Light Construction. We published it and then boy, did the comments come in. We had to do another special phone call with our engineer just to make sure that everything was kosher. So in this video, we're gonna go through all the framing, the engineering, the design, the concrete, all of that good stuff. So this is a little bit unique the way we had to frame this because our ridges are offset and we've got beams and a wide open room. So if you wanna see how we did that, I have a video from about three weeks ago. I'll link to it in this particular video. Let's head on down to the basement. Okay, so this is the room. This is roughly 24 feet square, something like that. Maybe it's 26 deep, 24 wide. And essentially what most people would do, or at least what we would have done, I should say, is this wall and this wall over here. A lot of times these would be full height concrete walls. This would all be filled with dirt. We would have a slab above that and that would be parking, right? It's the garage. So instead what we decided to do was make the perimeter, the concrete walls, so this wall is actually 10 feet tall concrete wall, which means large reinforced footings, lots of steel reinforcement in the wall because it has to act as a retaining wall as well. And then it's just a matter of just how much room do we have for beams. And we elected to put a column in the middle so that this is a, like an 11 and seven, let's see, 11 and seven eighths. I think it's a five and a quarter by 11 and seven eighths LVL runs across big point loads under the columns here big point loads under this column, something like 30 inches square, same thing there, so that the floor is transferred through the beam and the joist right down into the concrete underneath the slab. And then this is all gonna be insulated, so we've got the intera between the slab and the back of the two by six wall, and then of course the two by six wall will get insulated. And then the other thing to point out, this is something I did verify with the engineer, so 11 and 7 inch Roseburg eye joists. These are 12 inches on center, three quarter inch Advantech above. I did verify this, but I asked the engineer, can I frame this wall 16 on center? And he said, no, I want to make sure that you have a stud directly underneath the eye joist. And then of course the footing has been extended so that this is actually bearing. So we, we took, if you look at the plan dimension and it was like whatever it was, 24 feet outside, the bearing of these joists is actually less because of our eight inch wall, plus the foam, plus the small gap plus the five and a half, same thing on that side. So that is the framing. Now, what would somebody use this room for? Well, we were thinking that if they were to insulate, they're gonna insulate the ceiling anyway, insulate all the walls, and maybe you put sound deadening insulation in there, then maybe this is the kid's band practice room, or I mean, there's plenty of room for the kids to play. Even with this column here, like in an ideal world, we would have loved to have gotten rid of this column, but what do you think a 26 foot long beam, probably steel, I think that we would have been at least a 24 inch beam. And now we're talking about reducing the headroom in the middle to something like 82 inches. And I bet you that wouldn't have been strong enough. So this was just the best of the situation to put a column in here. You still have roughly 10 feet all the way around this column. Yeah, 11 feet. So this could just be the catch all room, the ping pong room. You might be able to get a pool table in here or whatever else. Why won't that fit in there? because there's a loom cube, that's why. Yeah, these little things for light. So, oh, and then one last thing, you notice that the walls are sheets. These are shear walls. Those transfer to the walls up above. You saw that the back of the garage goes all the way up. That's the side of the garage, it goes all the way up. So, this is probably the safest room that you could be in, in an earthquake. Although, let's be honest, we would all rather just be out on the golf course if there's going to be an earthquake. So. If you enjoy content like this, leave a comment below, tell me what, uh, or actually more specifically, if you still are super skeptical of whether or not this thing's gonna last, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> well, the engineer already went over it. And then of course we uh, met with the 
editor at JLC and we went over it again. He explained it in even more detail. Incidentally, just a quick aside, my job as a teenager was to come out and install the joist hangers after the fact, 12 inch on center. So this was like 1994, 1995. We did it at the time with 2x12. So in other words, the reason I mention that is this is about a 30 year old detail for us at least. And those houses haven't come crashing down. My brother's house, it's the same thing. And they've got their whole, like um, it's the kid's playroom. It hasn't gone anywhere. The drywall hasn't even cracked. So anyway, if you like content like this, leave a comment below. What could we do better? What would you like to see content wise? Is this kind of like a explanation of framing walkthrough and the engineering of interest? And if you don't think it's interesting, then don't leave a comment. I only want to see positive comments because it's all about positive affirmation. Right, Nikki? Yep, she's nodding yes. Hit the like and subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next video. Kablamo! Check out my sweet electric e-bike. This is the Express 750. We went for the upgraded motor. It is a quiet motor. Now, we have been owners of electric e-bikes. My wife has had one since 2019. Her parents, they all got in on the Kickstarter. She has 1,100 miles on her electric e-bike. So why do we pick electric e-bikes? My father-in-law. He got involved in the Kickstarter, bought bikes for him and my mother-in-law, and then my wife bought one. She has over 1,100 miles now on her bike. This was, I think, 2019 during the Kickstarter. Anyway, the reason that, that they first looked at the bike was because you could fold them up, they could stow them away and go camping. And as you get older, and quite frankly, all of us, I don't know about you working in construction. I really like to bike ride, but you get tired, especially by the end of the week. What's great about the e-bike is you get extra range. Uh, my sister and brother and I chipped in and we bought my dad an e-bike here a few years back so that now he doesn't have to worry about the range. He can keep up with us when we go on vacation. So it kind of takes some of the worry out of it. Here is what makes electric e-bikes worth considering. Basically, they offer quite a few models under a thousand bucks. And then from there, you can add accessories, upgrade motors, things like that. In fact, I think there's like over 75 accessories, something like that. They offer multiple models under a thousand dollars. In fact, they were the first to offer hydraulic brake standard on bikes less than a thousand dollars. They're all UL listed. This though is new for me. This is really kind of a cruiser bike. Where I live, we can bike ride now as these developments are getting built out. You could put a good 10 to 20 mile bike ride. That is why I picked the Express 750. One of the things I really like about this is basically all we had to do is pull it out of the box and a couple of pieces click together. Five to 10 minutes, you are set up, charge the battery, you are ready to go. These bikes will get up to 28 miles an hour. Fifty mile range, although you can get longer range models and they go quite a bit farther than that if you need it. They've got foldable bikes, bikes like this, bikes with fat tires. My mother-in-law now has a trike so that it's more stable as she's tooling around. Thanks to Electric E-Bikes for sponsoring this video. If you would like to be one of the happy 500,000 plus riders, hey, join the family, then scan the QR code, click the link in the description, go check out and see which ride is best for you. And if you want a free bike cover, then use the discount code AWESOMEFRAMERS at checkout. I have the blueprints in front of me, so let's just take a look at the blueprints because some of what I just explained probably isn't going to make a whole lot of sense. You're looking at the front elevation. Pretty plain, pretty simple, nothing to it, but it does have a walkout or daylight basement. So let me go up a page. We're going to start basically at the top and work down. So let me zoom in. I think some of you might be interested in this. So here is the roof framing plan. It has the ridges called out, the rafters, all of that kind of stuff. And Typically when we trace point loads for gravity loads, we would start at the top and then like, for example, notice right here in the middle, zoom in on that a little bit, right here in the middle, it says four two by six studs. So that is carrying a splice on the glue lamb. I need to then, or the engineer needs to trace that or the architect, who, whoever, but really all of us, if we're being honest, we all should be checking. That needs to be traced all the way down to the earth. So all the gravity loads need to be traced all the way down to the earth. So you'll notice here we have a five and a half by 15 glue lamb that runs across the garage and it carries those rafters. Okay. So that's just kind of gets us started over on the right. You see some of our details for the roof framing that everybody likes to squawk about. <laughs> so for example, let's just get over here. We have the frame fast screw or the Simpson strong tie SDWC. Notice that the detail demonstrates how it attaches. We have our toe nailing and our blocking detail, and then also the detail at the ridge. Again, all of that is site-specific by an engineer who's licensed in this state. 
All right, so now let's go to the main plan. We're gonna trace these loads down a little bit more, and it's all gonna make a whole lot more sense once we get down to the basement. So you notice here, we have those four two by six studs again. They were in the attic, they need to be in the wall below that, and then they need to be in the wall below that. You notice too, that on the garage, we have sheathing, so that's our shear wall. And then because we're using zip R6, which is an insula insulated wood structural panel, we come across the back of the garage, you tape all those seams, that becomes airtight, and that way nothing from the fumes of vehicles gets into the house from there. You'll just notice, it, this is kind of in conjunction with the video that I did a couple weeks ago, that over here by the stairway, we have our four two by six studs, our five and a half by 18 glue lamb, and then where it's posted in. I'm not sure why they're not listed here, why there isn't four studs listed. It's just an oversight, that's okay. We are going to take care of it. But now coming back to the garage, we have our garage slab. We do have some changes here. This is what the designer, we don't work with an architect. The designer put this in, inch and an eighth TNG subfloor with inch and a half fiber reinforced concrete deck. I went over all of the changes with our engineer and then that's, that's how we ended up at the design that we have. What I'm pointing out here though is the perimeter. It is 24 by 24, outside to outside. So just a nice rectangle. Okay, now let's go down to the basement. This is where a whole lot more is happening. <laughs> okay, so let's start in the garage. We notice that down here at the bottom, let me zoom in. We have a 36 by 21 by 12 footing. That's all steel reinforced. And then that six by six that you saw in the video in that wall. Now we went ahead and inferred out this whole thing with two by six to hide that post. It didn't need to be. That, that has a little bit more to do with insulation than structural. Eight inch concrete wall is our, right here you can see that. Eight inch concrete wall on an eight by 24 footing, but that changes and I'll show you. Now you notice over here on the side, it says, see this other detail. You can already see that this is an expanded footing because it's acting as a retaining wall to some degree until the floor is on, but also the footing is expanded to the inside of that room so that we could frame load bearing walls on that room. That further shortens the span of those eye joists. So if we order 12 footers, in reality, it's not actually spanning 12 feet. Right here in the middle, 36 by 36 by 12 with four, five number four bars each direction. And then we have our footing here. I typically always form these piers bigger because I know they're gonna get buried. And so sometimes I'll just round to the biggest one just so that when I'm cutting material, if I have to cut two at 36, I might as well cut six at 36. If I have two to cut at... Okay, so looking over at the section drawing, the video that we did uh, posted a couple weeks ago, Here's basic, I should have put this in that video. I don't know what I was thinking. You notice that we have our two by 12 rafters, they head up to a ridge, then our interior, there's how that's framed with kickers and then angled posts. So this ridge gets posted down to that five and a half by 18. Okay, so that's just how some of that is on there. Then of course, as you come down to the foundation, that's what we're interested on in. Now the engineer has our wall. Notice that the, in, that the uh, steel reinforcement is two inches of cover, so it's, spaced two inches off the inside of the form. And then you notice that he specified 36 inch by 12 J hooks. Those are 10 inches on center. And I have videos that cover all of this. Um, it's the Olympic, uh, whatever. I'll link to it here. <laughs> we have three bars in the footing and then you see how it extends in, then an insulation detail, um, et cetera. And then here is a look at those side walls, two foot, six footing, and the way that he wants us to split it up is we have eight inches in the middle, you know, two foot six, one foot three, this direction, then eight inches, and then what's whatever is left. And you notice again, we have 36 um, by 18 J hooks that are 12 inches on center. That is separate from the re steel reinforcement that's essentially the grid pattern in those walls. Okay, and then if we come here, here he specified the footings for this other wall. It's a two foot footing. He specifies it's a little bit biased toward the inside. I think I'm using the correct terminology. Again, J hooks that are a little bit longer and they catch two of those horizontal bars. Okay, let's stop it there. All right, so let's take a look at some of the progress over time. What you were looking at is this exact foundation. So there's this 10 foot walls stacked horizontally. We typically stack vertically, but there it is horizontally. It saved us a lot of time. You can see the variety of step downs, the tall walls, the big footings. We use the fast form. There's a look at the steel reinforcement. So you can see the grid pattern in the walls. And then as I showed you the details for the footings themselves, and you can see all those structural footings and point loads. This was a nice thing that we had done is all the gravel put in there to begin with so that we had like, I think there were what, 12 inch tall footings? I can't remember now. And there's a look at the house next door. It's the same thing, but mirrored. 
Oh, that was a hard day. <laughs> it looks like a lot of people. My wife's actually at the bottom in the yellow. Uh, the section of her wall was the best. <laughs> and there's the two foundations completely stripped. Well, just about. This was like the cleanup strip day. Oh, what a nightmare. It was really a tough time for me. I don't want to relive that. Anyway, here is then all of the uh, under slab foam has been installed. We installed it up to all of those strip footings. And then they came in and placed all the concrete for the slab. Those guys poured both of these, placed both of these the same day. It was fun. I just flew the drone all day. Uh, only in the last couple of years have I been able to transition from bags on 100% of the time to breaking off to do a little bit more of this. And then, of course, here's the framing. You can see some of the shear walls down below blocking over that, the 12-inch on center eye joist, the nice big LVL that's carrying that slab. Here's a little look at that framing. So we pre-install all the hangers because eye joists, man, they're to the 16th. So that five and a quarter, this is all a Roseburg eye joist system, by the way. They sit on those walls, and then here we are. Sebastian did an outstanding job. Notice those contraction joints. When he came back to place the driveway and do the exposed aggregate, he lined those right up. If nothing else, I'll just get lots of rage bait because you're driving a Tesla. <laughs> Okay, so what I want to do now is ha what I want to do now is have her drive the car in, and I will hold up the microphone and let's just see what we hear from below. Are we going to hear any kind of creaking or popping or anything? So let me just call her. Go ahead and drive in. I'm gonna hang up. I can't hear anything. Did you actually drive in? I can't hear a thing. <laughs> I was really hoping there'd be some kind of sound. I can't even hear the car. I can hear your terrible K-pop music though. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, I don't really know. That did not work out the way that I thought it would. I really thought that we would hear something. Now, granted, it is an EV and they're pretty quiet. They still put out a sound when you drive slow, right? But the, the sound of the tires, nothing. Not even her terrible choice in music. <laughs>